Hi there. Uh, today we're going to talk about cyanotic versus acyanotic congenital heart defects and we're going to be using this schematic of the heart. Pause the video if you want to take a look at it before we continue. So first some general differences between cyanotic and acyanotic heart disease. In cyanotic heart disease you become blue in acyanotic, you do not become blue, generally. You can become blue, but we'll keep it simple. Uh, in cyanotic heart disease, oxygen poor blood flows to the systemic circulation. This leads to a bluish color because there is a lot of deoxyhemoglobin. which has a darker color than uh, oxygenated hemoglobin. Usually this blue color occurs at an O2 sat below 85% approximately. And cyanotic heart disease is usually the result of a right to left shunt. So blood moving from the right vascular system, which is oxygen poor, uh, to the left uh, vascular system. Now, acyanotic heart disease uh, means O2 rich blood um, flowing to the pulmonary circulation, which is a complete waste because the only purpose of the pulmonary circulation is to oxygenate blood and, and decarbonate it. Um, so, this is actually a waste of heart action. Usually acyanotic heart disease is a result of a left to right shunt. Now we're going to talk about a couple of examples of cyanotic and acyanotic heart disease starting with the cyanotics. All of the names that I'm going to right now start with a T so you can remember that. Truncus arteriosus cyanotic heart disease, transposition of the great vessels, so the aorta and pulmonary trunk, tricuspid atresia, which means the tricuspid valve is non-existent, functionally, and the tetralogy of fellow, which is quite uh, fascinating pathology and therefore a, uh, a good exam question. So let's get started with truncus arteriosus. In truncus arteriosus these two separate aorta and pulmonary artery become one and also the right and left ventricle kind of become one. So in truncus arteriosus this is what happens one compartment and now what's going to happen is oxygen poor blood arriving from the rest of the body to the vena cava goes through the right atrium to the right ventricle and instead of it going just to the pulmonary artery to be oxygenated again part of it goes to the aorta consequence SO2 goes down this is truncus arteriosus Next, we have the transposition of the great vessels. Transposition of great vessels. Transposition means they switch positions. With great vessels, we mean the aorta and the pulmonary artery. So let's take a look. What's going to happen when they switch places? The aorta is going to go here and the pulmonary artery is going to go here. Now what you might have already noticed is that now we have two separate circuits. One that is circulating blood through the body and this never reaches the lungs. It 
it's not unimaginable that the SO2 here becomes low. And the other circuit, its blood never reaches the rest of the body. It has a nice and high SO2, but it's completely useless. So never reaches the body. You can imagine that this is not unifiable with life. This has to be a transposition in the great vessels. There has to happen something quickly. Next up, we have the tricuspid atresia. Let's get to it, the tricuspid atresia. In, normally we have the tricuspid valve, also known as the atrioventricular valve of the right heart half, which allows blood to flow from the right atrium to the right ventricle during diastole. In a tricuspid atresia, this is shut off, this is non-existent. Nevertheless, blood arriving from the vena cava to the right atrium has to find its way. It has to go somewhere. Fortunately, uh, well, I wouldn't say fortunate in this context, but there is a possibility for this blood to escape, namely through the foramen ovala. This is the foramen ovala. It is a opening between the um, right atrium and left atrium, which normally closes after birth. But if you have a defect like this that leads to higher pressures in the right atrium, uh, the foramen ovala is going to remain open. And so you're going to have a left uh, to right shunt, uh, right uh, to left shunt, leading to uh, oxygen poor blood arriving in the left atrium, going through the left ventricle to the aorta. So this is our circuit now. So the SO2. It's going to go down because this blood is not arriving uh, to the lungs. So that's tricuspid atresia. Finally, for the cyanotic heart diseases, uh, we have the tetralogy. Of phallo, which has four characteristics, which is a pulmonary valve stenosis. A ventricular septal defect, a hole in the wall, right ventricular hypertrophy, and an overriding aorta. Uh, so let me draw this out so you understand what these four things are. First of all, the pulmonary valve stenosis. This is the pulmonary valve normally. Now it's closed off. Now as a result of this closing off, the pressures in the right ventricles are, are going to become higher, and blood here that arrives from the vena cava through the right atrium to the right ventricle has to find its way somewhere. So what we're going to see is a septal defect here that blood can fl flow through. Now as a result of this higher pressure, also the right ventricle is going to hypertrophy. It's going to become strong. So these are the first three characteristics. We have the pulmonary valve stenosis, we have the ventricular septal defect, and we have the right ventricular hypertrophy. And the final defect is an overriding aorta, meaning the aorta overrides the septal defect, allowing efficient flow of blood uh, into the aorta. So these were our four cyanotic heart diseases, the trilogy of Fallot, tricuspid atresia, transposition of the great vessels, and truncus arteriosus. Now to our acyanotic heart diseases. Um, the septal defects, which may be an atrium septum defect, a ventricular septal defect, or an atrial ventricular septal defect even. And the patent ductus arteriosus. Let's take a look at the septal defects. Let's see how they can cause left to right shunt. Um, septal defects may occur here, here, and here. 
And in any way, usually the pressure in the left part half is higher. So what's going to happen is oxygen rich blood arrives through the pulmonary vein here. It's going to flow either here or it's going to flow here or it's going to flow here. So what you have is have a left to right shunt. Um, now the blood that still flows to the aorta, it's, it's normally oxygenated. So the SO2 is normal. Um, but you do have this waste of oxygen rich blood flowing through the pulmonary artery. So the heart is basically wasting its time and energy. Uh, so this is a septal defect. And finally, we're going to talk about the patent ductus arteriosus. Patent meaning it stays open after birth. Let's talk about the ductus arteriosus. It's a little tube, a little vessel between the pulmonary artery and the aorta that allows the baby to live, or actually the fetus to live. Because uh, uh, just some, some repeat physiology, the baby's lungs or the fetus's lungs are filled with water. So the pulmonary pressure in the fetus is very high and blood that comes in from the body, from the vena cava, it's not gonna go here. It's going to go here through the ductus arteriosus to the aorta. And this is, in fact, a right to left shunt. But it's not problematic because the blood from the right heart half in the fetus is oxygen rich because of the placenta that oxygenated it. So that's before birth. After birth, this whole situation changes. The baby cuffs up fluid, fluid is resorbed, and so the pulmonary pressure becomes lower and blood starts flowing through the pulmonary artery. Pressure becomes lower. Now, normally as you remove the placenta, you also remove prostaglandins. These prostaglandins are what kept the uh, ductus arteriosus open. Now, if for whatever reason the uh, ductus arteriosus remains patent even after removal of the placenta, what you're going to have is the shunt that used to be right to left is going to reverse. It's going to become left to right because the pressure here has become lower. So what you're going to have is blood arrives from the pulmonary vein to the left atrium to the left ventricle to the aorta part of it goes to the aorta but part of it flows back through the pulmonary artery hence you have a left to right shunt so2 is normal you're not going to become blue generally but your heart is wasting energy Particularly interesting here is that you can treat this with NSAIDs, uh, which uh, inhibit cyclooxygenase enzymes, uh, thus reducing to a, leading to a decrease in prostaglandin synthesis. And hopefully, this ductus arteriosus becomes a ligamentum arteriosum. So these were our two main asynodic heart defects. The septal defect, which may be an atrial septal defect, an atrioventricular septal defect, or a ventricular septal defect, and the patent ductus arteriosus. I want to thank you for watching this video and uh, stay tuned for more.